She fell and hit her head. Do you think a lot about the way she died? This doctor who looked all of 17 uh, showed me her x-ray. As if someone had just grabbed my gut and just twisted it. When someone with a traumatic brain injury appears normal, but blood is building in the brain. Publicly, you haven't spoken about her. It's nobody's business. He went back to work just days after Natasha's funeral. What happened? Dad approached me and didn't really tell me much. I just didn't want to seem to be wallowing, especially for my boys. I think that there is nothing you won't do for someone you love. Everyone lets everyone down at some point. You didn't need to be a rocket scientist to see what was happening. You know? She's gone. Do you think she had any idea about what could go wrong? The earth isn't stable anymore. People end up focusing on the way somebody died as opposed to the way they lived their life. I thought this is something I have to do. She and I had made a pact. If any of us got into a vegetative state, we pulled the plug. That was my immediate thought. These tubes have to go. But at that point, you didn't think that there was any hope. She was a radiant beauty. Cascading hair, I remember. I'd never had that kind of an explosive chemistry situation with an actor. She and I were like a, a Stair and Rogers. We had adjusted this wonderful kind of uh, uh, dance, free dance on, on stage every night. You know, a lot of people said that they saw them kind of fall in love on, on the stage. After the ceremony, we were all going in to start the night's festivities, and she grabbed the microphone. Behind my back, Natasha had been taking singing lessons. Incredible. Yeah. Well, she always packed so much into every day, Natasha. I think maybe she knew that she wasn't destined to be on this earth for a long period of time. I have this charmed life of having a, fam a strong family life and my two little baby boys and my husband. She cared for everybody. She has a motherly instinct and just looked, looked after us all, you know? It's almost as good as it can get right now for you. Yes, I guess. Liam's whole life was unstable before he met Natasha. Not many Ballymena boys dreamed of becoming an actor. <laughs> At the time, Belfast was a dangerous place because of clashes over British rule. Neeson saw acting as an escape. He never expected to feel that way again until his perfect life came crashing down. In March 2009, Natasha was on a ski vacation in Quebec, Canada with her oldest son, Michael. She was coming down a beginner slope on Mont Tremblant when she fell and hit her head. She wasn't wearing a helmet. And then I flew up immediately, and uh, this doctor uh, showed me her x-ray, and you didn't need to be a rocket scientist to see what was happening, you know. Uh, I was told she was brain dead, and seeing this x-ray was like, wow, you know. I went into her, and told her I loved her, said, sweetie, you're not coming back from this. Uh, you've banged your head. It's, I don't know if you can hear me, but we're bringing you back to New York. All your family and friends will come. Do you think she had any idea about what could go wrong? No, of course not. Who, who would, you know? Crippled by his grief, Liam buried himself in his work, but Natasha followed him wherever he went. He went back to work just days after Natasha's funeral, and he's worked nearly non-stop ever since. I'm not good with, without work. I just don't, I, I wallow too much, you know, and I, I just didn't want to, especially for my boys, to be seen to be wallowing in sadness or depression. Or, there's, there's periods when I hear the door opening. She would always drop the keys in the, on the table and say, hello. So anytime I hear that door opening, I still think I'm going to hear her, you know. And then it's, it's uh, grief's like, it hits you, it's like a wave. You just get this profound feeling of instability. You feel like a three-legged table. Just suddenly, you just, the earth isn't stable anymore. Liam was desperate to be there for his son, Michael, but he choked up when he needed him most. Bono was a pal, and he came around to have a dinner. And I remember he was sitting beside Michael and uh, just out of the blue he said, uh, what age are you, Michael? He said, Michael said, 13. And I said, yeah, that's the age I was when I lost my mom. Mm. That was it. And I, I, I could have kissed him for it. He was like saying, you know, I lost my mom at this age and I'm doing okay. Mm. And you will do okay too, you know? But Liam couldn't be vulnerable like Bono 
and left Michael to work on his violent action movies. Liam Neeson has developed a reputation for being one of the fiercest, most powerful performers in Hollywood. He delivers an intensity that resonates with audiences, but his professional success has come hand in hand with devastating hardship and loss. Then, one script about a widower and his grieving son gave Liam one last chance to save his family. I, I have an English agent and she had sent it over and she said, listen, Liam, have a look at this. It scared me a little bit because it was very, very close to home. As if someone had just grabbed my gut and just twisted it. Liam had a chance to reconnect with Natasha once again. And she says, why do you want to do it? And I said something like, if I don't do it, I'll curl up and die. I thought this is something I have to do. And I thought, gosh, this would be fantastic if I could do it with Michael. Dad approached me and didn't really tell me much. He just sort of said, Michael, I want you to read this. There was something really exciting about that and sort of honoring mom in that way. Ready to embrace his grief, Liam started healing with Michael for the very first time. He sort of looked at me after he read it. I looked at him and I said, look, what do you think? Do you want to, should we, should we try and go through this together? It was quite cathartic in many ways for both of us. We started filming a beautiful butterfly flew between us. And after the scene, I said, Michael, did you see that? He says, what? I said, did you see the butterfly? And Michael said, no, I didn't, I didn't. And, and you said, Natasha's with us. This makes you think, you know. He's uh, saying, this is, they're doing okay. Or it may have been flying through and going, do another tech. That wasn't very good. <laughs> By embracing his grief, he was able to connect with Natasha and Michael. It's been a lucky experience being able to, to do it, especially with your dad. He's been a great teacher, even though he doesn't like to admit it. He has taught me a lot of really great things. A wonderful feeling of, yes, this terrible thing has happened, but we're all connected. We're all connected. You know, so many people have died before their time, and it's so precious. Like, you've got to live it every day. I thought, yeah, his mom would be really proud of what he's just done. Everyone lets everyone down at some point. How you come back from that, too. We all know how important that is. It was very hard for, for, for William and I, knowing that there was absolutely nothing that we could do. We must have been in just this state of shock. For the first 28 years of my life, I never talked about it. How is it that so many people that never met this woman can be crying and showing more emotion than, than, than I actually am feeling?